Imagine that you're in the market for a new computer. You head to your local electronics store and ask an associate for help. They walk with you down the aisles and different detail the differences between the computers. This HP here has an Intel Core i7 quad-core processor running at 4 GHz with LGA 1150 socket and 8 MB L3 cache. This Dell over here has 16 GB of DDR3 RAM and an NVIDIA GTX 760 with 4 GB of GDR5 memory. Now, do you want the 512GB solid-state drive or the 1TB hard disk? You, you take all that in and you're convinced some of those words are English, but very little of it makes sense and you end up buying the recommended computer without really knowing if it's better for you. Does this sound familiar? If it does, then you're not alone. This is just one example illustrating the confusion that exists surrounding technology in people's lives. You may be saying, I'm not a computer person. I don't even know how a computer works. And this is the problem. You don't need to know the minute technical details that a computer scientist would know. However, understanding technology at a fundamental level in order to interact with it on a daily basis, or having the basic knowledge to make informed decisions on new policies relating to technology is not called being a computer person. That's called being technically literate. What exactly is technical literacy? If you look it up, you might find something like this. The knowledge needed to use technology responsibly, effectively, and efficiently to access, create, manage, and communicate information. That sounds a bit too much like a textbook to me. I prefer to think about it more like this. Understanding your life. Now, before you start having an existential crisis, let me explain. The use of technology is no longer confined to the world of the computer people. Every demographic is seeing technology become an integral and unavoidable part of their lives. Think again about that scenario from earlier. Everything from buying new computers to debating new state and national policies, from elementary school education to global research, from driving home to having a warm house when you arrive, and so much more involve the daily use of technology. As of January 2014, 90% of Americans own a cell phone and use the internet, and about half of the population owns a smartphone or tablet. Those are incredible numbers, but still don't do justice to the direction society's heading in. If we look at the numbers for the young adults in America, they are even higher with cell phone ownership and internet use at 98% and smartphone ownership at 83%. That is mind-boggling, and those numbers don't even include teens under the age of 18. The future generations of our society are currently in a state where nearly every young adult you pass on the street has a computer in their pocket. With technology permutating every part of our lives, why is there such a lack of technical literacy? One major factor is the lack of technical education and the use of technology in schools. Many different programs have been created to put computers in schools, use new technologies like smart boards, and put computer science classes in middle and high schools. And this is a step in the right direction, but there's a large quantity of schools that are still very behind technologically. Access to a computer and the internet at home is also vital to understanding how technology affects our lives. Only 70% of American households have access to the internet, but the demographic splits tell the real story. That percentage falls to falls for the less than 30,000 salary bracket, and again for the 65 plus age group, down to 37% for people without a high school diploma. It is nearly impossible to understand the impact of technology on our daily lives if you don't even have access to it. So how can we fix this issue? Unfortunately, the solution involves a lot of work to begin to solve, but many organizations have taken great strides to move us in the right direction. Organizations like U.S. Digital Literacy and the National Council of Teachers of English have websites and articles dedicated to the importance of technical literacy. Companies like Microsoft have dedicated sections of their websites for proposed technical literacy curriculums and online courses. The U.S. government even has an official site to help educators spread technical literacy to their students. All of these efforts and the programs that work toward giving every person access to technology are steps in the right direction. Being technically literate has numerous benefits, the first and most basic of which is convenience. How many times have you had something go wrong with your phone or computer, call tech support, and sit through many frustrating minutes as someone who can't even see your computer tries to help you? While companies are improving their customer service, understanding your technology well enough to know some basic remedies can save you a lot of time, money, and frustration. However, this is nowhere near the most important benefit. The internet can also provide us with seemingly endless amounts of information, and it can be incredibly difficult to find the information you are looking for. Having basic searching skills and knowledge about how search engines work can drastically improve your efficiency when finding information on the internet. But possibly the most important benefit, however, is the ability to make informed decisions. With technology becoming a fundamental part of our lives, the way we live those lives is changing. Lawmakers are constantly debating new laws to govern these new technological frontiers. How are we expected to vote for delegates that will make decisions on these new policies when we don't even have the knowledge necessary to understand their platform? 
The FCC recently voted on a new net neutrality rule set and classified the Internet as a Type 2 utility. This is a very good thing and a big step towards keeping the Internet open and fair for everyone. I was reading an article about the decision and went to read the comments. The top comment read, So is this a good thing? This was a major political decision that is going to have lasting impacts and many people didn't even know it happened or don't know what it meant. These kind of situations are going to continue to happen until technical literacy becomes a more widespread skill. A lack of technical literacy also comes with a hefty cost. According to the Internet Crime Complaint Center, over $781 million was lost to internet scams in 2013 alone. There are many different types of scams that are used, but most, if not all, scams can be prevented with some simple techniques that can save people millions of dollars. People also have these illusions that their data is safe on the internet, commonly using phrases like, it's in the cloud, or my password's unbreakable. Every bit of data on the internet sits in a physical server somewhere. Nothing you delete is ever actually gone, and every password is breakable given enough time. I had a friend in high school who got in an argument about his data on Facebook, claiming that it was safe because he had a strong password and all his security settings were pro properly set. And I told him that if someone really wanted his data, they, he, they could get it. And, but no, he assured me that his security settings were airtight. And I said, we'll see. So I went home and drafted up a fake Facebook email um, saying that his account had been compromised and set everything up and sent it off. And sure enough, five minutes later, I got an email back with his username and password in it. And I wrote him on a slip of paper and brought him into school the next day and said, you might want to get these changed. And I did all that not to be a jerk, but to prove a point. Understanding how data is stored and secured on the internet is imperative to ensure that the data that controls your life is as safe as it can be. One of my favorite educators, Carl Sagan, once said, We've arranged things so that almost no one understands science and technology. This is a prescription for disaster. We might get away with it for a while, but sooner or later this compulsible mixture of ignorance and power is going to blow up in our faces. The lack of technical literacy is a massive problem that needs to be resolved. The work of the organization and government programs I mentioned earlier are great, but what, what can we do? What can you do? Have curiosity. We all use technology on a daily basis, but most people never wonder how it works. Next time you watch a news broadcast on net neutrality, send an email, or take a selfie, ask questions. Take in a second to wonder how this vital part of our lives works. Learn something new and share this knowledge with the people around you. Spreading technical literacy is all about access to technology and education. And it can't wait. Thank you.